Okay, so actually, we are beginning with what? Man, sorry, the same managerial bond by different topic, which is what? Demand estimation. Previously, we were treating what? Elasticity. Okay. So, with demand estimation, all you try to talk about is with your demand, how are you going to estimate it to get your variables? Are you okay? So, with demand estimation, we have multiple regression model. We also have simple regression model. Are you okay? But with the simple regression model, we don't mostly use it. We mostly use what the multiple regression model. So there's the multiple regression model. That's y naught is equal to beta naught plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2 plus b3 x3 plus we call this the error term. Are you okay? Meaning that all other variables or factors that are affecting demand but are not what's present. Are you good? Okay. So with this multiple regression model, we estimate this multiple regression model to get what? The estimated regression model equation. So y is equal to beta 1 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 2 x3. It's actually the same as this. But just that with the estimated regression equation, you eliminate what? The error term. Are you good? So we only use this to solve what? Our question. Okay, so some of the questions would be like, okay, interpret the parameter coefficient or what? Parameter what estimate, they are the same. Sometimes you don't see parameter estimate. You see parameter what coefficient or coefficient, they are the same thing. So we are going to interpret this. Are you okay? This side is your dependent variable. This, the beta naught, B1, B2. Are your parameter estimates? Okay. So actually, all the side are all, all independent what variables. So this side, all the side, independent variables. Are you okay? This is your dependent variable. All these are your independent variables. Beta naught, beta one, beta to our what parameter what estimate. Are you okay? okay? So you are going to interpret the beta naught, beta one, b two, b three. So interpretation of parameter is estimate or coefficient. So with the beta naught, you wouldn't be giving the question that there is beta naught. You would see intercept or constant is the same thing. Either you see a constant. Or you see what an intercept, they are the same thing. Okay, so the intercept is the value of the dependent variable, which is this the value of the dependent variable with all the explanatory variables. All these are what the explanatory variables are you okay? When all the explanatory variables are what zero, that's how we interpret what the beta one are you okay? So let's move on to the beta one with the beta one. Let's assume. An example to what negative 2.4. So this is how we interpret it. A unit change in the independent variable, which is the side. Any change in the independent variable. B1, this dependent variable. B1 is independent. B2 independent. B3 independent. So a unit change in the independent variable, which is what? B1, will lead to a change in the dependent variable, which is the y naught by 2.46 units. If it's negative, you have negative 2.4 cells. Since it's negative, by 2.4 cells units in the opposite direction. Opposite direction, since it's negative. If the answer you have here is negative, use what? In opposite direction, since it's negative, all things being what? Equal. It's the same approach we use for the B2. But if it's positive, you only change the side. So a unit change in the independent variable will lead to a change in the dependent variable. By 2.46 units. Since it's positive, it's what? In the same direction, all things being equal. Are you okay? So, this is how you interpret the beta 1, b You do the same for beta 3, beta 4, beta 5. Are you okay? So, if it's negative, this is how you interpret it. Any change in the independent variable will lead to a change in the dependent variable. Independent variable by 2.46 units in opposite direction. Since it's negative, are you okay? So the negative sign will come here. Are you good? So all things being equal. Let's move on to sometimes to be able to interpret what R squared. Are you okay? So an example 0.4632. That's how we interpret it. 
an R squared of 0 0.463 implies that all the explanatory variables explains the times this by 100 explains 46.32 percent of variation in the dependent variable with the interpretation they are constant they're supposed to memorize them so that when you gain it because you just make the changes are you okay so now let's move on to the adjusted r square example 0 0.4632 with the interpretation for the adjusted r square the same as the r square only differences with the adjusted r square you only add this take me into consideration the sample size and the number of explanatory variables. So let me interpret it. An adjusted R squared of 0 0.4632 implies that all the explanatory variables explains less than 146.32% of variation in the dependent variable, taking into consideration the sample size and the number of what explanatory variables. So actually, you can learn the interpretation for the R squared. If it's adjusted R squared, they only add this, taking into consideration the sample size and all the and the number of explanation variable. We also have something called F statistics when we are dealing with multiple regression model and that demand estimation. But the F statistics it's giving us then how we denote F statistics. T car or T stat is equal to coefficient of our standard error. The T car is called T calculated. The T stat is called T statistics. Are you okay? So that's how we calculate for F statistics. And the demand estimations, we also have something called what? hypothesis testing. Are you okay? So it's hypothesis testing. If you test in the variables B0 and B1 is equal to zero, we say there is no relationship between the explanatory variables and demand. We say it is not what significant. Are you okay? Are we explaining now? Do more of the calculation. Okay. With this hypothesis testing, we must be what? Test for the significance of the individual explanatory variables, are you okay? You'll be asking the question to test for the significance of the individual explanatory variables. So you have five steps before you get the answer. The first step is still the hypothesis. Okay, there are two types of hypothesis. We have what the now hypothesis and what the alternative hypothesis. So the now hypothesis is denoted by what? A capital H with a subscript what? O, are you okay? So the now hypothesis, should always contain the equal sign, either what equal to, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. And the next point, our decision is based, we are still talking about the now hypothesis. Our decision is based on the now hypothesis. Here, we either reject or fail to reject, which is what the same amount of accept the now hypothesis. Are you good? So, with the alternative hypothesis, it's created by a capital E with a subscript word. A small e, letter. So the alternative hypothesis should never contain the equal sign. Either this means not equal to, are you okay? This is equal to, this means not equal to, not equal to, it should be what less than or what greater than, are you okay? So point two, no, sorry, it's still under what the alternative was hypothesis, the point two, it says. The opposite of the now hypothesis, if it's not what it is, it's what now hypothesis. A linear relationship with the alternative hypothesis, there is a linear relationship which exists between x and y. Are you okay? With the now hypothesis, there is no linear relationship. So, step one, you state the hypothesis, you are moving on to what? Step two. So, with the step two, choose the level of significance. The level of significance is denoted by what? An alpha. That's so there are three standard levels of significance. If it's 1%, meaning the alpha is what? 1 minus 100 is what? 99. So in alpha is what? 0 0.1. So we are 99% confident. If it's 5%, 5% is what? 0 0.05. 5% minus 100 is what? 95%. So we are 95% confident. If it's 10%, 0 0.1, meaning that 10 minus 100, so we are what? 90% confident. So we have tricks involved when you are dealing with level of significance. The level of significance is denoted by alpha, as I said earlier on. Okay. Whenever you are dealing with demand estimation question, and there is no specific significance given in the question, we assume 5%. So we choose 5% if the level of significance is not given. So step three, find the test for the F statistics. 
they are denoted by what either a T count or a T star, which is equal to coefficient over what standard error. T count is T calculated. T star is what? T statistics. Are you good? So, testing for the significance. You're on what? The fourth step. So, the first step, find the critical values. You find the critical values, you have two ways of doing it. First, you find the level of significance, which is what the alpha, and you divide by two. The second one, degree of freedom, which is denoted by gm. Gm is equal to n minus e minus one. Where n is the number of observations or sample size. Where k is the number of explanatory variables. Where this is a constant, so gm is equal to n minus e minus one. You need these two things to read the numbers from a given table to get to a theta. So you need the level of significance, which are divided by two, and the degree of freedom to get what you call what? The theta. Are you okay? And the name for the theta is what theta we need there. Okay. So step five is the decision mean. If your theta, this means absolute values, absolute values of your theta is greater than your theta, then you get the now hypothesis. And it means the now hypothesis is what? False. Okay. That particular explanatory variable is what? Significant. If your t curve is bigger than your t curve, we reject the now hypothesis, meaning that it's what? A false statement, making it what? Significant. If your t, if your t curve is less than your t curve, or your t curve is greater than your t curve, meaning it's what? We fail to reject. Therefore, it's what? Insignificant, making it what? A true statement. Are you okay? So, if t curve is greater than t curve, we reject when it's what significant. If your t curve is less than your t curve, or your t curve is rather greater than your t curve, then we fail to reject when it's what insignificant. Okay. So, there's a note here. We remove the minus in the t curve column. Yes, the minus in the t curve column. Let's say we have this t curve. Let's say we have t curve. Example, let's say we have t curve to be. Negative 2.4. We're the assumption based on the decision whether Whenever you get a t curve to be negative, we take absolute values of this. So if I take the absolute value of negative 2.4, the negative moves out, making it what's positive. That's what's explained here. We remove the minus in the t curve column to make it positive due to the absolute values of the t curve or the t star. Some of the questions you'll be giving your coefficient in parameter estimate to calculate for what? Or to test for the significance. In some cases, you didn't be given what? the coefficient in the parameter. So how then do you calculate for the what? Or test the significance? You'll be giving P values. So we can also use P values in what? Making decision for what? our level of significance. Are you okay? So there's it. Making decision using P value in conclusion. If your P value is less than 0.01, then you reject the noun at 1% significance level. Otherwise, we fail to reject. Meaning that if your significant, your level of significance, let's say you have 0.0, it's less than what? 0.01. So it's what? We reject the now hypothesis. Are you okay? Or if I talk about why, let's see your level of significance was 5%. Are you okay? Then you are given a figure to be. 10.68. Five percent is what? 0 0.05. Are you okay? So 0 0.05 and 10.60. Is 0.05 greater than 10.60 or 0 0.05 is less than 10.60? 0 0.05 is less than 10.60. So therefore what? We reject the now I put this under what? If we give them 10 percent. 10 percent. 0 0.05, it's less than, so you, so you reject it as what? Well. This is percentage. That's how we do it. Are you okay? So we explain when you are doing the calculation. So if your P value is less than 0 0.05, then we reject the now hypothesis at 5%. 0 0.05, 5%. Significant level. Otherwise, we fail to reject at 5%. If your P value is less than 0 0.1, then we reject the now hypothesis at 10%, 0.01, 10%. Significant level. Otherwise, we fail to reject or accept at 10%.
So basically, we are going to combine all we just did to solve what practical questions on what demand estimation. 